Military aviation, civilian contracts on military aircraft, major airlines, corporate jets, cargo, general and experimental aviation, even manufacturing. The route you take as a mechanic can have a massive effect on your life. You ruined my life! Whether that's your paycheck, your work-life balance, or your benefits. Stick around for my thoughts on the different routes to becoming successful in aviation maintenance and my opinion on the industry as a whole. It's just his opinion. Aviation maintenance, as I have mentioned in my previous video, is suffering from major shortages of experience. It's leaving massive gaps in the workforce and companies are desperate to fill them. This is truly the cyclical nature of aviation. So you really want to be sure that this is what you want to do. Plan ahead and have something to fall back on because chances are you're going to need it. Don't tell me what to do. Now, I really don't want to scare anyone off with this video. The pay can be great and the work is extremely rewarding but it's also stressful. Press nap! Attention to detail in this industry is incredibly important. Lives literally depend on the fact that you and the pilots do your jobs correctly. The industry is definitely here to stay and robots will not be taking over mechanic jobs anytime soon. Battle droids, it's an invasion on me. It's just a matter of deciding if you can handle the high bar of entry and the low pay in some areas of this industry. College degree helps, but should you go to school to get your certificates alongside an aviation degree? Personally, I don't think so. Because of how much of a title surge there can be in this industry at a moment's notice, you will want a fallback plan. So pursue aviation as a passion. Learn from the experience the benefit from the pay, but always know that there could be another crash and you need a backup plan. Military pay and pay on contract jobs are fairly consistent. Assuming you're okay with being away from your family for long periods of time, the military doesn't ever stop flying. Hit the brakes! There are no brakes! So as long as you want to stay in that niche, you're pretty safe, unless you're going somewhere unsafe. It does seem that the pay in these jobs is leveling out on the low side recently, but you can sometimes get lucky and score a tax-free position in a combat zone if you're willing to take that risk. When I left the military to pursue a contract position overseas, I was barely making ends meet on the military pay. Just to make ends meet on a government salary. Through no fault other than my own. If you are strict with yourself, you can make a great living on the pay, especially since the military covers almost 80% of the other costs of living, like housing, food, and healthcare. Granted, the standard of all these benefits is such a low bar, I don't think a limbo champion could make it under. It is there, and it is nearly impossible to be fired from this career path. You either have to be medically discharged or seriously screw up. Contract pay, in combat zones especially, is pretty great, simply because you're working a lot. The hourly compensation is crap. The benefits are worse, depending on the contract. This is, of course, my personal opinion, so don't take this as the gospel's truth. A word as good as gospel. There are plenty of great contracts out there. I just got burnt by mine during COVID. I spent 367 days straight. Over a year? Yeah in Afghanistan, working 12 hours a day, seven days a week. I still came out of it in great shape though. Because of that, I made six figures in those 12 months. <laughs> if you'd like to see a video about my specific experiences in the contracting world, go ahead and drop a comment. I do read those and I do use them to guide my channel. So let me know. A minor subset of contracting jobs are firefighting contracts. The pay is great and most of them don't require you to live near where you'll be working. Schedules can be pretty cool, especially for a single person. Uh, generally, they're 12 on, seven off, or seven on, three or four off, something similar. It's usually a week or more, and then roughly half a week off. Corporate, cargo, charter, major airlines, regionals, they all follow a similar pay structure and scheduling. You're more likely to have a better work-life balance with a corporate or a charter gig, but top-out pay is not as high as cargo, majors, or regionals. Those tend to top out a little bit higher, but you've got to be prepared to work third shift 
for at least the first year. Graveyard shift. Benefits are generally very good, but like other career paths, you're gonna have good bosses and bad ones. You're gonna have good coworkers, and you're gonna have coworkers that absolutely hate everything and just want the rest of the world to be as miserable as they are. What would you like to do in the whole world? Burn it all. There are plenty of channels for upward mobility in these jobs and even lateral movements depending on your interests. I have known mechanics who have jumped over to engineering, quality assurance, production control, even so far as becoming major corporate leaders higher up in that corporate food chain. Stop of the food chain. Follow. Another pretty great avenue for someone looking for a bit more stability, greater benefits, and fairly competitive pay is going to be manufacturing or large maintenance, repair, and overhaul facilities. These facilities are generally turn you into essentially an assembly line robot. It is an adequate assembly line worker. But the pay tops out fairly high, and many of these companies have very competitive benefit programs that allow their employees to pursue their own interests easily if you can get the time off. That is the struggle. <laughs> Time off. And finally, last but certainly not least, is, in my opinion, the toughest market in aviation and honestly where my passion lies. The pay can be dangerously low. The work-life balance can be anywhere from dismal to entirely unmatched in the industry. This sector of the industry takes more knowledge and ability than probably any corner in the market, simply because of the large variety in the work. If you think this sounds like your type of work, then you're in the minority because you just fell in love with general and experimental aviation. Personally, I think this is where most people's passion with aviation really begins, with the wide variety of airplanes that you as a regular Joe could fly or work on. Of all of these pathways, this one offers the most freedom. You can be your own boss if you want to. That's a big job with a lot of responsibility. Not right away, of course. You need to earn an additional rating called your IA or inspection authorization in order to do anything in that regard. But this aspect means working on so many different things. You could go one day working on a classic wood and fabric aircraft from the 1930s to the next day working on a Cirrus SR-22 that was manufactured in 2021. It means knowing the rules and regulations and how to interpret the aircraft manual from the 1930s when you have no idea what you're doing. You have to learn to deal with owners of the aircraft directly. Be friendly to the customer. Think of the customer as a friend. And realize that getting fair pay is going to be like pulling teeth. Like pulling teeth with you people. No aircraft owner wants to pay what your skill is truly worth. This pathway is without a doubt where you will find the saltiest, most knowledgeable, and probably the poorest mechanics. It's also where the most passion for this industry can be found. If you want to find a mentor, someone who's really going to show you how to get where you want to go, this is the route you need to take. Now, if you've made it this far without deciding that aviation isn't the career for you, congratulations. Go ahead and drop a like and a comment. You got this, you got this. I'd love to know which way you're gonna go because you've decided that your passion can weather the difficulties this industry can bring. You've got such passion. I wish you luck on your journey and offer the video to my left as further guidance along it. Make this work. <laughs> Thanks for coming. See you later. GoPro, stop recording.